Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angel, and yes, this is a Halloween video. Halloween is probably my favorite holiday to craft for, and today we are going to be celebrating Halloween in June. I grabbed these little lanterns from my local thrift store. They're both a little different, but I picked them up at different times. And you can see that the glass is a little murky and usually I would clean these, but since this is gonna be a Halloween project, I decided to leave those just murky and dirty. The first thing I wanted to do though is change the base of this gold one because it was a little too shiny and new for me. And I also wanted it to match the other one, so I painted over it with some black chalk paint and then I went over it with some of my European gold rub and buff and for the other one since it was already black I just went over it with that rub and buff and then this one here the glass really wouldn't stay too good so I ended up gluing that down with some gel super glue now once my little bases were ready I grabbed some of these Dollar Tree cotton balls and I just started shredding these all apart to fill both of the glasses, I ended up using just one bag of the cotton balls, all shredded, and then I just started stuffing these cotton balls down into those lanterns. And I didn't stuff it too tightly, I just kind of left it fluffy inside of there. Once they were both stuffed, then I just grabbed this little chalkboard sheet that I got from Dollar Tree, and I folded it over, and I'm going to cut out some little eyes and mouths for these lanterns. Then and finally, I'm just adding these little eyes and the mouths to my lanterns to make some ghosts. For this project, I grabbed a 9x12 canvas from Walmart, and here I'm just laying out some of my paints that I'll be using for this. I have Admiral Blue, Pavement, Black, and White, and I'm also grabbing a little bowl of water to keep my paintbrush wet for this process. So I, of course, started by wetting my paintbrush, and then I'm dipping into that pavement color, which is a really, really dark gray color, and I'm covering my entire canvas. Now, you don't need to worry about paint strokes because as you can see here I am going back in with a little bit more of that pavement on my brush and I'm just patting over this in little tiny circles. Now once I have the whole canvas covered again I'm gonna wet my paintbrush again and dip into that black and I'm just darkening up all the corners and around the sides. Now I do end up covering this canvas again but the reason I'm doing this is because the thin paint is going to sit onto the thick paint. So no matter what colors I do over top of these, the outer edges are still going to be a little darker. And you can kind of see that right here as I'm going back in, I mixed up a little bit of white with that pavement color and I'm just kind of brightening up the center and upper corner because I plan on putting a moon in this general section. And once I was happy with that, then I'm going to dip my paintbrush back into the water and I'm kind of going into that Admiral blue color and just mixing it with some of the pavement and a little bit of that mixed up pavement and white color and then I am going to go over this entire canvas with this color. I wanted this to be a little bit grayish blue in the end to look like a night sky so you'll kind of see me dipping into the admiral blue and then back into the gray again so I just kept mixing the colors until I was really happy with it then covered the entire canvas and I wet my paintbrush one more time and mixed up a little bit of a lighter blue color because the background was feeling just a little dark for me even though it's supposed to be a night painting it was still a little too dark so you'll see here I even go in with a little bit lighter kind of bluish gray color because I do know what I was going to put on this and it just needed to be a touch lighter. 
Once I was finished, I let this completely dry and then I'm gonna grab some of my carbon paper and I also traced out this little witch holding a moon from my computer. So I'm gonna tape that to the carbon paper and then I'm gonna tape down my carbon paper to the canvas just so that it's not moving around. And then I just used this little tool that actually came with my carbon paper and I traced over the witch. And as you can see, once I removed that carbon paper, then it transferred that witch holding the moon onto my canvas. So then I just went in with a really small paintbrush and some of my black acrylic paint. And I started out by doing the edges of the witch and all the fine little details. But once I pretty much had the edges and her hair done, I just went back in with a larger paintbrush and filled that all in. Now, if you wanted to, you could definitely use a paint marker or paint pen for this part but I just found it easier to paint it all in. After I finished her silhouette then I went into the moon just using some of that white acrylic paint and again I just used my tiny brush and did the outline first and then filled it in. I also wanted to add some bats to this painting so I traced some little bats off of my computer again and I used a little piece of my carbon paper to trace those out onto my canvas and then for this part I actually did use my paint marker to fill them in. For this next Halloween project, I grabbed some of my air dry clay and you can see I have a large clump of it and I'm just kneading that around in my hands to warm it up. And then I'm gonna start rolling this around. Now I wanted the top part to be a little slimmer than the bottom part. So again, I'm just rolling that around and then I'm making sure that the bottom and the top are flattened. So I'm just gonna continue rolling it around and patting it until I'm happy with the shape. Then I just grabbed one of my taper candles and I'm gonna very carefully push this down into the center of the top of this. Now, as I'm pushing it down, I'm also going around and shaping it, making sure it is not cracking or breaking anywhere. Then I will pull that candle back out and again, go around and kind of shape this a little more. As you're shaping it, you'll wanna keep testing the candle in it just to make sure that your hole stays large enough or tight enough to hold your candle. Now once I was happy with it, I'm taking a little bit of water on my finger and I'm going to rub that all over this, rubbing out any of the imperfections or cracks that there may be. And right after, with this still a little damp from the water, I'm taking a really small paintbrush and using the end of it to kind of put in some lines to make this look like a ghost. And the reason I'm doing this while still wet is because it makes it easier to kind of draw those lines where you want them. And also this is gonna help prevent it from cracking where you're putting those lines. Now I let these dry for a few days before sanding them down with some very fine grit sandpaper just to smooth out anything that I didn't get with the water. And for the final touch, I just added some little eyes, some little mouths onto these candle holders just using my fine tip marker. For this next project, I picked up this little shadow box frame from my local thrift store. So of course, the first thing I needed to do was take everything apart, including taking out the smaller frame from the shadow box frame. Then to make these a little spooky, I am painting both of these little frames with two coats of my black chalk paint. Once they were both dry, I took some of my European gold rub and buff, and I just kind of went over the detail on the smaller frame. And then I also did a little bit of detail on the larger one. 
Then I just grabbed this little glittery spider that I got from the Dollar Tree last year and I'm not worried about taking the glitter off. I just went over it with two coats of my black chalk paint and it covered up that glitter just fine. And then I decided to go over him with some of that rub and buff just to give him a bronzy gold look as well. For the backing of my smaller frame, I'm just going to use this little scrapbook paper that I got from Amazon and I just used a glue stick to attach it to the back backing that was already with the frame. Then I'm just going to grab a piece of Dollar Tree's black floral wire and I cut that down and kind of bent it over and then hot glued it to the bottom side of the spider. Then for the top of the wire that is going to be pushed into the backing of the frame, I just grabbed one of these sewing push pins and kind of cut the end of it off, wrapped that floral wire around it and then pushed it through the backing and then added some hot glue. I found this little mantle clock at my thrift store a while back and thought it would be perfect for a Halloween project. And I'm sure you all know how much I love clocks. So the first thing I did was paint this with two coats of my black chalk paint. Then I'm going to use some painter's tape to protect the top and the bottom and keep those black because I'm going to take a wet sponge and sponge over this entire center part with some white acrylic paint. Now I realize it looks a little crazy right now as I'm doing this, but I'm going for a stucco look and don't worry, I'm actually taking some black acrylic paint with a wet sponge and going back over this to kind of blend in that white. And you'll also see as I take the painter's tape off that I darkened the edges and corners to make it look really spooky. I let this dry completely before grabbing some of these shape stencils that I got from Amazon and I'm going to use these shape stencils to do the doors and the windows on here to make it look like a haunted house. Now if you can freehand this by all means but I just found it easier to use the shape stencils. So while I'm letting my door and my windows dry I decided to add some creepy little vibes to one side of this. I traced out a spooky little tree with an owl sitting in it and then just used some of my carbon paper to transfer this onto the clock. To fill in the silhouette, I actually used one of my Sharpie markers to kind of go around the edges and then I filled it all in with my paint marker. Now going back to the windows, I'm again using those stencils, just using the same ones that I had used before and I mixed up a little bit of dark red and some dark yellow paint to make this dark deep orange color. I wanted to give the windows the illusion of a little bit of light but not really stark light so it's kind of just faintly there and as I was doing this I also traced around the edges with my sharpie marker just to give them some more detail and then I used one of my other stencils just to use as a line so that I could make the window panes. Then it was time to really spook up this haunted house. So I grabbed some rub on transfers that I got from Dollar Tree last year and I just started randomly placing some ghosts and some spiders and I even added a little grave on one side of this. But I did notice my ghost transfers were looking a little washed out on this color. So I did go in with one of my paint pens and just kind of used the rub on transfer and colored those in. And that's going to be it for today's spooky Halloween video. I hope you all enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.